The quality of your life is the quality of your relationships. Tony Robbins Better 50% now than 100% never. Do not be afraid to treat people the way they treat you. Men are of little worth. Their brief lives last a single day. They cannot hold elusive pleasure fast. He melts away. All laurels wither. All illusions fade. Hopes have been phantoms. Shade on air-built shade since time began. Sophocles Above all things, respect yourself. A private life is a happy life. The most important persuasion tool you have in your entire arsenal is integrity. Zig Ziglar Free from all compulsion, in all cheerfulness and alacrity thou mayst run out thy time, though men should exclaim against thee never so much, and the wild beasts should pull in sunder the poor members of thy pampered mass of flesh. For what in either of these, or the like cases, should hinder the mind to retain her own rest and tranquility, consisting both in the right judgment of those things that happen unto her, and in the ready use of all present matters and occasions? so that her judgment may say, to that which is befallen her by way of cross, this thou art in very deed, and according to thy true nature, notwithstanding that in the judgment of opinion thou dost appear otherwise, and her discretion to the present object, thou art that which I sought for. If you don't let go of the wrong people, you'll never meet the right people. Life is a boxing game. Defeat is not declared when you fall down. It is declared when you refuse to get up. Everything lasts for a day. The one who remembers and the remembered. Marcus Aurelius The moment when you want to quit is the moment when you need to keep pushing. Mastery of reading and writing requires a master, still more so life. What you think you are is not what you are, Alan Watts. Has someone been honored above you at a banquet, or in a greeting, or in being called in to give advice? If these things are good, you should be pleased for the person who has received them. If, on the other hand, they are bad, do not be upset that you did not receive them yourself. Remember, with respect to acquiring things that are not in our power, you cannot expect an equal share if you do not behave in the same way as other people. 2. How is it possible, if you do not hang around someone's door, accompany them or praise them, to have an equal share with people who do these things. You will be unjust, therefore, and insatiable, if you refuse to pay the price for which these things are sold, but wish instead to obtain them for nothing. 3. For what price are lettuces sold? An obol, let's say. When someone else then pays an obol and takes the lettuce, whilst you, not paying it, go without. Do not imagine that this person has gained an advantage over you. Whereas they have the lettuce, you still have the obol that you did not pay. 4. So, in the present case, if you have not been invited to someone's banquet, that is because you have not paid them the price for which a banquet is sold. They sell it for praise. They sell it for flattery. Pay the price then, for which it is sold, if you think this will be to your advantage. 
but if at the same time you do not want to pay the one, yet wish to receive the other, you are insatiable and foolish. 5. Do you have nothing then in place of the banquet? You have this. You have not had to praise the person you did not want to praise, and you have not had to bear the insolence of their doorkeepers. So, the unwilling soul sees what's hidden, and the ever-wanting soul sees only what it wants. Very little is needed to make a happy life. It is all within yourself, in your way of thinking. The cost of freedom is always high, but Americans have always paid it. And one path we shall never choose, and that is the path of surrender or submission. John F. Kennedy Do not compare your life to others. You have no idea what their journey is all about. Those things that hurt instruct. Your vision will become clear only when you can look into your own heart. Who looks outside, dreams. Who looks inside, awakes. Carl Jung I continue my course by actions according to nature until I fall and cease, breathing out my last breath into that air by which continually breathed in I did live, and falling upon that earth, out of whose gifts and fruits my father gathered his seed, my mother her blood, and my nurse her milk, out of which for so many years I have been provided, both of meat and drink, and lastly, which beareth me that tread upon it, and beareth with me that so many ways do abuse it, or so freely make use of it, so many ways to so many ends. Maybe you are not healing because you're trying to be who you were before. That person doesn't exist anymore because there's a new you trying to be born. No regrets, just do better next time. No great mind has ever existed without a touch of madness. Aristotle. Big dreams require healthy habits, and healthy habits require self-discipline. He who has injured thee was either stronger or weaker than thee. If weaker, spare him. If stronger, Spare thyself. Your past does not equal your future. Tony Robbins These inferences are invalid. I am richer than you. Therefore, I am better than you. I am more eloquent than you. Therefore, I am better than you. But these are better argued. I am richer than you, therefore my property is greater than yours. I am more eloquent than you, therefore my speech is superior to yours. For you, of course, are neither property nor speech. Your strongest muscle and worst enemy is your mind. Train it well. People are frugal in guarding their personal property. But as soon as it comes to squandering time, they are most wasteful of one thing in which it is right to be stingy. We become not a melting pot, but a beautiful mosaic. Different people, different beliefs, different yearnings, different hopes, different dreams. Jimmy Carter Better a broken promise than none at all.
Live your life so that when you die, the world cries and you rejoice. The way you see people is the way you treat them, and the way you treat them is what they become. Zig Ziglar If thou shalt intend that which is present, following the rule of right and reason carefully, solidly, meekly, and shalt not intermix any other businesses, but shall study this only to preserve thy spirit unpolluted and pure, and shall cleave unto him without either hope or fear of anything, in all things that thou shalt either do or speak, contenting thyself with heroical truth, thou shalt live happily, and from this there is no man that can hinder thee. Be civil to all, sociable to many, familiar with few, friend to many, enemy to none. Be silent for the most part, or if you speak, say only what is necessary in a few words. The worst type of man behaves as badly in his waking life as some men do in their dreams. Plato, The Republic. It is the first responsibility of every citizen to question authority. The first step to getting anywhere is deciding you're not willing to stay where you are. The most basic condition for happiness is freedom. Here we do not mean political freedom, but freedom from the mental formations of anger, despair, jealousy and delusion. As long as these poisons are still in our heart, happiness cannot be possible. Tish Nat Han Do not take pride in any excellence that is not your own. If a horse were to say proudly, I am beautiful, one could put up with that. But when you say proudly, I have a beautiful horse, remember that you are boasting about something good that belongs to the horse. What then belongs to you? The use of impressions. Whenever you are in accordance with nature regarding the way you use impressions, then be proud for then you will be proud of a good that is your own. Move with strategy, not emotion. If you light a lamp for someone else, it will also brighten your path. The nation which indulges towards another a habitual hatred or a habitual fondness is in some degree a slave. George Washington Be yourself. People don't have to like you, and you don't have to care. Only you are enough. You have nothing to prove to anyone. The greatest of all mistakes is to do nothing because you think you can only do a little. Zig Ziglar That we ought not to, he angry with men. And what are the small and the great things among men? What is the cause of assenting to anything? The fact that it appears to be true. It is not possible then to assent to that which appears not to be true. Why? Because this is the nature of the understanding, to incline to the true, to be dissatisfied with the false, and in matters uncertain to withhold assent. What is the proof of this? Imagine, if you can, that it is now night. It is not possible. Take away your persuasion that it is day. It is not possible. Persuade yourself or take away your persuasion that the stars are even in number. It is impossible. When, then, any man assents to that which is false, 
be assured that he did not intend to assent to it as false. For every soul is unwillingly deprived of the truth, as Plato says, but the falsity seemed to him to be true. Well, in Acts, what have we of the like kind as we have here truth or falsehood? We have the fit and the not fit, the profitable and the unprofitable, that which is suitable to a person and that which is not, and whatever is like these. Can then a man think that a thing is useful to him and not choose it? He cannot. How says Medea? Tis true I know what evil I shall do, but passion overpowers the better counsel. She thought that to indulge her passion and take vengeance on her husband was more profitable than to spare her children. It was so, but she was deceived. Show her plainly that she is deceived and she will not do it. But so long as you do not show it, what can she follow except that which appears to herself? Nothing else. Why then are you angry with the unhappy woman that she has been bewildered about the most important things and has become a viper instead of a human creature? And why not, if it is possible? Rather pity, as we pity the blind and the lame, those who are blinded and maimed in the faculties which are supreme. Whoever then clearly remembers this, that to man the measure of every act is the appearance. Whether the thing appears good or bad, if good, he is free from blame. If bad, himself suffers the penalty, for it is impossible that he who is deceived can be one person, and he who suffers another person. Whoever remembers this will not be angry with any man, will not be vexed at any man, will not revile or blame any man, nor hate nor quarrel with any man. So then all these great and dreadful deeds have this origin in the appearance? Yes, this origin and no other. The Iliad is nothing else than appearance and the use of appearances. It appeared to Paris to carry off the wife of Menelaus. It appeared to Helen to follow him. If then it had appeared to Menelaus to feel that it was a gain to be deprived of such a wife, what would have happened? Not only a we would the Iliad have been lost, but the Odyssey also. On so small a matter then did such great things depend. But what do you mean by such great things? Wars and civil commotions, and the destruction of many men and cities. And what great matter is this? Is it nothing? But what great matter is the death of many oxen and many sheep? and many nests of swallows or storks being burnt or destroyed. Are these things then like those? Very like. Bodies of men are destroyed and the bodies of oxen and sheep. The dwellings of men are burnt and the nests of storks. What is there in this great or dreadful? Or show me what is the difference between a man's house and a stork's nest, as far as each is a dwelling except that man builds his little houses of beams and tiles and bricks, and the stork builds them of sticks and mud. Are a stork and a man, then, like things? What say you? In body they are very much alike. Does a man then differ in no respect from a stork? Don't suppose that I say so, but there is no difference in these matters. In what, then, is the difference? Seek and you will find that there is a difference in another matter. See whether it is not in a man the understanding of what he does. See if it is not in social community, in fidelity, in modesty, in steadfastness, in intelligence. Where then is the great good and evil in men? It is where the difference is. If the difference is preserved and remains fenced round, and neither modesty is destroyed, nor fidelity, nor intelligence, then the man also is preserved. But if any of these things is destroyed and stormed like a city, then the man too perishes. And in this consist the great things. Paris, you say, sustained great damage then when the Hellenes invaded, and when they ravaged Troy, and when his brothers perished, by no means, for no man is damaged by an action which is not his own. 
but what happened at that time was only the destruction of Storks' nests. Now, the ruin of Paris was when he lost the character of modesty, fidelity, regard to hospitality, and to decency. When was Achilles ruined? Was it when Patroclus died? Not so, but it happened when he began to be angry, when he wept for a girl, when he forgot that he was at Troy not to get mistresses but to fight. These things are the ruin of men. This is being besieged. This is the destruction of cities. When right opinions are destroyed, when they are corrupted, when then women are carried off, when children are made captives, and when the men are killed, are these not evils? How is it then that you add to the facts these opinions? Explain this to me also. I shall not do that. But how is it that you say that these are not evils? Let us come to the rules. Produce the precognitions. For it is because this is neglected that we cannot sufficiently wonder at what men do. When we intend to judge of weights, we do not judge by guess. Where we intend to judge of straight and crooked, we do not judge by guess. In all cases where it is our interest to know what is true in any matter, never will any man among us do anything by guess. But in things which depend on the first and on the only cause of doing right or wrong, of happiness or unhappiness, of being unfortunate or fortunate, there only we are inconsiderate and rash. There is then nothing like scales, nothing like a rule. But some appearance is presented, and straightway I act according to it. Must I then suppose that I am superior to Achilles or Agamemnon, so that they by following appearances do and suffer so many evils? And shall not the appearance be sufficient for me? And what tragedy has any other beginning? The Atreus of Euripides, what is it? An appearance. The Oedipus of Sophocles, what is it? An appearance. The Phoenix, an appearance. The Hippolytus, an appearance. What kind of a man then do you suppose him to be who pays no regard to this matter? And what is the name of those who follow every appearance? They are called madmen. Do we then act at all differently? By failing to prepare, you are preparing to fail. Trust yourself. You've survived a lot, and you'll survive whatever is coming. If you have a garden and a library, you have everything you need. Cicero I have just three things to teach. Simplicity, patience, compassion. These three are your greatest treasures. Surround yourself with people who talk about visions and ideas, not people. Your imagination is the power of creation, Neville Goddard. I am formed by nature for my own good. I am not formed for my own evil. What then is the discipline for this purpose? First of all, the highest and the principal, and that which stands as it were at the entrance is this. When you are delighted with anything, be delighted as with a thing which is not one of those which cannot be taken away, but as with something of such a kind as an earthen pot is, or a glass cup that, when it has been broken, you may remember what it was and may not be troubled. So in this matter also, if you kiss your own child or your brother or friend, never give full license to the appearance and allow not your pleasure to go as far as it chooses, but check it and curb it as those who stand behind men in their triumphs and remind them that they are mortal. Do you also remind yourself in like manner that he whom you love is mortal and that what you love is nothing of your own. It has been given to you for the present, 
not that it should not be taken from you, nor has it been given to you for all time, but as a fig is given to you or a bunch of grapes at the appointed season of the year. But if you wish for these things in winter, you are a fool. So if you wish for your son or friend, when it is not allowed to you, you must know that you are wishing for a fig in winter. For such as winter is to a fig, such is every event which happens from the universe to the things which are taken away according to its nature. And further, at the times when you are delighted with a thing, place before yourself the contrary appearances. What harm is it while you are kissing your child to say with a lisping voice, Tomorrow you will die, and to a friend also, Tomorrow you will go away or I shall, and never shall we see one another again. But these are words of bad omen, and some incantations also are of bad omen. But because they are useful, I don't care for this, only let them be useful. But do you call things to be of bad omen except those which are significant of some evil? Cowardice is a word of bad omen, and meanness of spirit, and sorrow, and grief, and shamelessness. These words are of bad omen, and yet we ought not to hesitate to utter them in order to protect ourselves against the things. Do you tell me that a name which is significant of any natural thing is of evil omen? Say that even for the ears of corn to be reaped is of bad omen, for it signifies the destruction of the ears but not of the world. Say that the falling of the leaves also is of bad omen, and for the dried fig to take the place of the green fig, and for raisins to be made from the grapes. For all these things are changes from a former state into other states, not a destruction, but a certain fixed economy and administration. Such is going away from home and a small change. Such is death, a greater change, not from the state which now is to that which is not, but to that which is not now. Shall I then no longer exist? You will not exist, but you be something else of which the world now has need. For you also came into existence not when you chose, but when the world had need of you. Wherefore the wise and good man, remembering who he is and whence he came, and by whom he was produced, is attentive only to this, how he may fill his place with due regularity and obediently to God. Dost thou still wish me to exist? I will continue to exist as free, as noble in nature, as thou hast wished me to exist. For thou hast made me free from hindrance in that which is my own. But hast thou no further need of me? I thank thee, and so far I have remained for thy sake, and for the sake of no other person. And now in obedience to thee I depart. How dost thou depart? Again I say, as thou hast pleased, as free as thy servant as one who has known thy commands and thy prohibitions. And so long as I shall stay in thy service, whom dost thou will me to be? A prince or a private man, a senator or a common person, a soldier or a general, a teacher or a master of a family? Whatever place and position thou mayest assign to me, as Socrates says, I will die ten thousand times rather than desert them. And where dost thou will me to be? In Rome, or Athens, or Thebes, or Giara? Only remember me there where I am. If thou sendest me to a place where there are no means for men living according to nature, I shall not depart in disobedience to thee. But as if thou wast giving me the signal to retreat, I do not leave thee. Let this be too from my intention, but perceive that thou hast no need of me. If means of living according to nature be allowed me, I will seek no other place than that in which I am, or other men than those among whom I am. Let these thoughts be ready to hand by night and by day. These you should write, these you should read, about these you should talk to yourself and to others. Ask a man, can you help me at all for this purpose? And further, go to another and to another. 
than if anything that is said he, contrary to your wish, 